Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day and 750,000 uh, students, uh, teaching staff and non-teaching staff, including invigilators, resume school today. I'm talking about JHS uh, pupils. Uh, if I give you the breakdown, 532,000 JHS pupils, 218,000 teaching and non-teaching staff, including invigilators, 17,429,000 schools across the country uh, are, are resuming school today. Yesterday, during uh, his 13th address, President Kufuado enumerated a few measures that have been put in place to ensure that pupils who are going to school, including teachers, are all safe, you know, as they resume school. And we just want to find out from stakeholders what they make of the measures. We've been joined on the phone by Andrew Ofusu Denchi, who is Education Technical Program Manager at the World Vision Ghana. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Right. Yesterday you had the president. Did you hear the president yesterday? Yes. Okay. Well, what do you make of the, uh, the, the measures put in place as schools resume in, in the midst of this pandemic? Let um, me say good morning to your uh, across the country. I think the measures the president put in place were spot on, that they were spot true, and we asked some of these measures that will help in um, okay. the spread of COVID in our schools as we move it through. Okay. So one of the things President Ekufuado said, which a lot of people uh, questioned, was the fact that uh, for GHS3, they are spending 11 weeks in school uh, plus one more week for their BEC exams and the fact that they're not going to be in class for longer hours. What do you make of that? Um, I, at this stage, I think the duration, the length of time that kids will spend in school, is not so much a bother as to what interventions are there to help these children cope throughout the uh, 11 weeks that they will stay in school. Mm -hmm. If the measures outlined uh, by the Ministry of Education are anything to go by, and uh, the human factor, if the teachers and the caregivers would follow these directives in the way it has been enshrined, I think that duration will not be a greater problem. So, what World Vision Ghana? I know that when when it, when you look at other countries who eased restrictions on schools, especially South Korea, some have had to quickly close uh, their schools because they were having a surge in the rec number of recorded cases. What would you proffer as solutions as schools resume? Uh, the, the nature of COVID nineteen is not cut in stone. It's not something that and any country can say that this, this is how it is and it's all one size fits all. Mm -hmm. The dynamic changes with each context. Mm -hmm. And for our context, this is how we have understood it. Mm -hmm. And so within the next few weeks, we, I think the situation is through it. Mm -hmm. We will be monitoring, observing, and taking uh, measures. Mm -hmm. So if it does happen, Mm -hmm. that our, pro our situation changes, we would also have to change. Well, if you're talking about situation changing, I, I, I know that President Ekufuado announced that they're going to be giving uh, uh, PPEs to these students. We're told that 10 regions have taken delivery of their PPEs. Two more regions are yet to take their deliveries, as well as districts. We haven't recorded any district taking delivery of their PPEs. What would you say with regards to implementation and uh, measures we put in place as the pupils resume school today? Just like I said earlier, the human factor is very important. Mm. Those measures are spot on. They are the measures that the UN um, proposes, the World Health Organization proposes, CDC proposes. But if we don't put the human element in it and make sure that these are available for the children, he said there will be two for kids as they return to school today. Mm -hmm and one will come out back later. So I, I want to believe that um, all these hand sanitizer uh, washing uh, bowls in the schools are there. Teachers are ensuring that children are keeping the distance of the number of children in the class are uh, adhered to. The period within which classes should occur is adhered to. They are avoiding um, like assembly and places where we put 
kids together. If they are observing me, we will not have a spike. But just beginning, as you said, some 10 regions have received supplies, others are yet to. It puts the situation in a very dicey uh, uh, way. And I think it's about time those who are doing the supply should hurry quickly to make sure that those regions that have not received their supplies quickly receive their supplies. Andrew, I would have to let you go, but before I let you go, there are concerns that if you're saying we have a limited number of pupils in a particular class, then don't make sure that the pupils do not uh, go home at the same time. You know, they don't close at the same time. It will mean that a lot of crowding, people who haven't seen their friends in a while would want to, you know, exchange some pleasantries. What do you make of that as well? In the beginning, I think that the staff in the school should be trained. And then we can have to talk to the children. These are not normal times. And I believe that even for some of us, we have been indoors for quite close to a number of uh, days or months. So children would have to understand that these are not the times that the things they used to do can be done all the time. Mm -hmm. Where the, the, the breaks have to be staggered. So you, like you have JHS 1, 2, 3, or you have A and B. DHS A and B, 3 A and B, A can go ahead of B, even during breaks. These are some of the measures that you can use to Absolutely. reduce mm. good contact of children and also avoid the spread. Andrew, we are grateful that you made time to speak with us this morning. Andrew Fosudin, Chief Education Technical Program Manager at the World Vision Ghana. We'll soon be speaking with Joyce Lanyo, who is the head of the SDG Gold 4, just to find out what she makes of the President's address yesterday, as well as measures put in place. But let's listen to President Kufado as he spoke uh, with regards uh, the the resumption of schools today. Final year junior high school students in 17,439 schools across the country will return to school to prepare and sit for the Basic Education Certificate Examination, BECE. They will be the final, and indeed, the largest batch of students to return to school. In all, we are expecting some 750,000 persons comprising 532,000 JHS3 students and 218,000 teaching and non-teaching staff and invigilators. So that was President Sekufaro in his 13th address telling us the measures put in place to ensure that students are safe as they resume school today. I've been joined on the phone by Joyce Lanyo, who is the head of SDG Goal 4, a civil society platform on SDG Goal 4. Good morning. Good morning, my sister. Right. So you had the president yesterday. What, what are your impressions of the measures so far? Thank you, and good morning to listeners. Mm. Um, the decision to open or not to open school has been very difficult for customers, mm. considering the concerns raised by the teacher union, the PTS, and, and all the key stakeholders in education. Mm -hmm. This is because of the life of our teachers and the, uh, and the students and all the educational workers, which probably might be at risk. And so for the president to come out with the strategies to go, in terms of the reopening, mm -hmm. is quite important. And we need to consider the key instruments that will allow us or give us the opportunity to open and be safe in school. Mm -hmm. My first thought in it is issues about the necessary input being supplied to the various schools so that the reopening will be quite smooth. If the office the PPEs are not in school and schools will open, I'm afraid that will be a challenge. Mm. Because in the uh, SHS, some of the schools have their PPEs very late. And you know, whenever people start coming, that is when the, uh, 
the virus also takes its position to infect other people. Mm -hmm. So we are saying here that there should be enough PPE to all the nooks and crannies of this country so that everybody will be ready and be given the input needed to start school. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about some of the in inputs that we need, we're talking about the PPE and issues about water. Clean water in school is very, very important. Mm -hmm. You might be having all the Veronica buckets, but if there is no water, then it becomes an issue. You agree with me that water situation in our country is dire. There are certain communities that have not had water running through their pipes for how long, God knows. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me, I would say water sanitation issues should be addressed. And I believe by now all the schools have been uh, 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 sanitized in terms of uh, what Zoom Lion has been doing in the various schools. That's the first step that we hope might have been done. Well, yesterday, yesterday. That all the notes marks are available for teachers to wear and the students dawning on them before they enter even the school premise, mm. without which it will be a challenge. Mm. Now, washing of the hands frequently. This is an attitude that our teachers will have to be trained to cascade the training down to the children. Constant washing of hands with the necessary soap and sanitizers available. Mm. We are also looking at all the protective needs for people working in the schools, mm. both teaching and non-teaching staff, mm. Mm. the women that are selling around. If the women, they will have to be tested to make sure they are negative before they can engage in any buying and selling activities mm. in the school. Madam Lanyo, no, no, yeah. yesterday, yesterday, you made a point about uh, the school being cleaned before the school, the pupils resume. Uh, we know that most of the schools have been fumigated, but yesterday we heard from a, a government official that they're going to, the students are going to be doing the cleaning when they resume school today. They're going to be doing the cleaning of the schools. It hasn't been cleaned yet. Um, I'm afraid that's a challenge because fumigating schools and cleaning is not the same. Hmm. It's not the same. And so we would like to implore our government to look out for the nursery strategy, engage the district assembly to be able to fumigate these schools. If the schools are not fumigated, then it's a challenge because almost all the SHS schools have been fumigated. Right. And when we talk about the numbers, it is at the basic school, 750,000 mm. uh, schools, 532,000 right. VHS. Mm. My sister, these are huge numbers that might be congregating in the school. So right. if they are not yet fumigated, that's the challenge. If you talk about ordinary cleaning, mm. Children can do it. Just sweeping and uh, 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 mm. dusting and making sure everything is clean. But mm. it's not the same as immigration. Right. So we want to appeal to government mm. to make sure that district assemblies within which these schools are located take up the challenge to fumigate the schools. Very, yes. very key. Mm, right, right. We're grateful that you made time to speak with us. We don't have a lot of time. We would have gone on and on with this discussion because it's very important. Joyce Lanyo is the head of SDG Goal 4, uh, Civil Society's platform on SDG Goal 4. And one thing she said for me, which is key, is that, yes, we're providing Veronica buckets, but what about schools who don't have access to water? And so that is critical as government should look at that so that schools who don't have water have access to water. We have